you can monetize this, you can open an OnlyFans account for this rude porn. You know, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's our secret century. So we come, we hang out, we talk about plants. Yeah. Um, Sometimes we trade and we swap the propagations. Yeah. Dear plant lovers, welcome to an exciting episode of discovery, learning, and unforgettable plant adventures in a Singapore garden that is covered in ornamental plants collected from all over the world. Our collector, Ryan, is a charming, knowledgeable, and passionate plant lover with one heck of a smile. In this episode, we tour his eclectic collection, which includes aeroids, begonias, orchids, platyceriums, labesias, and a plethora of stunning Indonesian plants. Our host, Ryan, as well as the plants featured in this tour, are easy on the eyes, making it effortless for you to stay glued to the screen. Ryan generously shares care tips for some species that he has found particularly challenging, as well as general garden maintenance. I promise that you will walk out of this episode smarter and more informed. I've hidden 10 gardening tips throughout this episode using subtitles, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled for them. They are either very useful or downright hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the drill. Subscribe, comment, and like. This helps the channel's algorithm tremendously. If you don't know what to comment, you can even leave an emoji in the comments and I will personally reply with one. Alright, let's get on with the show. Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm in Singapore in the plot of Ryan and his Instagram is Gardens of Tay Galaxy. I actually met Ryan a long time ago before I even had my channel. I followed him on Instagram and what caught me to his Instagram account is the cheekiness of his name. So Tay is a common name for Singaporeans and I knew at the minute I read the words that it's a Singaporean. <laughs> Anyways, we've been kind of like uh, pen pals, like online friends since then and I had the chance to meet him a few months ago, a few, yeah. almost a year, a year, I don't know. A couple of months ago, last year. Yeah, and finally we get to meet up here again at his plot and this is actually the farm, nine, nine way farm, farm way, farm nine. way nine is. The location is gonna be a secret, we, this is not open to public so nobody can just come in here anytime to look at stuff. But if you're interested in contacting some of the people here, you can reach them directly on their Instagram. They can ask about plants, maybe you can purchase some plants, swap some plants. I don't know, you guys do swap swapping a lot. Yeah, we do. Sell we do. periodically and yeah. Yeah, it's our secret century. So we come, we hang out, we talk about plants. Yeah. Um, Sometimes we trade and we swap the propagations. Yeah, it's a wonderful community. I do have two episodes if you want to meet some of the members before this. But again, Ryan is like probably one of my longest time friends. So maybe I'm going to be a bit more comfortable in this episode. I'm going to be a little bit more casual. Yeah, but this is like something that I'm really drawn to. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's happening? Yeah, so I think uh, <laughs> It, we went into kind of an explosive growth for the last couple of months. Yeah. So the one that you're looking at now is the uh, it's a Schefflera. Mm -hmm. So uh, Schefflera albedo bractata. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think recently they might have described it properly, but not too sure. But uh, I kept to this name. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can see, the leaves are very bullated. Yeah. Right. As it gets bigger, the bullation still still retains. It looks yeah. kind of like an anthurium leaf, right? Yeah, it does. Or sometimes people say the anthurium looks like the Schefflera with the <laughs> anthurium uh, polish system. I yeah. Think. Yeah, and the trunk is actually quite narrow for a tree this size. Yeah, it's about close to 2.5 meters. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, and every time, you know, when it push out new leaf, it push out three to four at a time. So oh, amazing. It, it pushes height quite, quite quickly. Yeah. Is this a fast grower for you? Uh, it took me like three to four months to acclimate after yeah. I received it because uh, it, I, got, yeah, I imported it from overseas. And yeah. then, but once it kind of enjoys the environment here, it just went into explosive growth. Okay, and this is from Asia, I think. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's from then... Indonesia. Oh, okay. Yeah, where you came from? <laughs> oh, oops. Even I don't know this plant, but nice to meet you here. And this one here is. Yeah, I, I believe you've seen this recently. Yes, but Make I a guess what is the name? Barringtonia? <laughs> yeah, Papuana. so it's a Papua SP. Yeah. So the full name is Barringtonia Papuana. Yes. Yeah, so if you can see, uh, it grows its one ring of leaf in a flush and then yeah. it will have a kind of a internodal distance before another flush comes out. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think this one is a bit more exaggerated because of the light condition. Yeah. Uh, if you were to see from you know any other one's specimen, yeah. uh, they're generally a bit tighter. So it really differs 
you know, because of the lack of light, they're just pushing up higher. Okay, a bit yeah. more uh, etoliated. But this yeah. is still new leaf that hasn't come out, right? No, no these are just like kind of like the, the bracts. Oh, so they're yeah. done, they're spent. Yeah. yeah. So these are the, the, the leaves. Beautiful. Are they difficult, do you think? Um, I think as with most of these kind of uh, trees, right, yeah. um, I tend to be a bit more careful with the root ball. So yeah. whenever I receive it, I tend to not want to um, you know, do a thorough cleaning. So I'll leave yeah. the mud ball there. So it came in, in one whole chunk of mud. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have to, I have to just uh, gently with care put it into a new pot and repot it. Without disturbing too much of it. Yeah, and, and as with all acclimation, you just make sure that um, you give it enough humidity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and after a few weeks, a few months, depending on how fast it, it acclimates, then, then you'll start growing. Um, I would say medium to bright indirect light, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then, it's fast free. It's pretty fast free, actually. Yeah. And then does it want to be wet or does it want to dry out? Um, I, because my plot, it tends to, uh, be, I, I mist it every day. Okay. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, because it's open, so yeah. it gets the rain every other day. So I keep the media a bit more draining so that when it, it rains and it gets wet, right, the roots doesn't get affected. Yeah. So uh, all the plants here are subjected to daily watering and misting. Yeah. So yeah. Heavy handed with the watering. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm an over waterer, so yeah. I tend to get my potting media a bit more draining. Yeah. yeah. And we mentioned earlier that it's probably like pumice the bark. Yeah. So this one I use uh, my potting, my aeroid potting mix. So mm -hmm. mostly bark, pumice, and perlite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for the Barringtonia papuana, I put in a lot more uh, peat okay. to make it more uh, water, water retaining. Mm. And it doesn't need a big pot actually for a yeah. plant this size. Yeah, for a plant this size it's actually quite a nice size pot. Same with the Schaeflera. These are actually really good potential for future of like indoor trees. Yeah. I think, I hope that this will one day take off. They're exactly. really, really wonderful. Exactly. I got inspired by um, Gardens by the Bay. So I think they actually have a very big tree yeah. um, in their outdoor garden. So I kind of saw it and it's all, it, it became my, it became uh, you know one of the wish list plants. Nice. All right, shall we look inside? Yeah, There's so sure. many interesting plants. So first of all, I think we want to uh, dis put a disclaimer that Ryan is not a big fan of variegated plants, <laughs> and also maybe not. I mean, you like aeroids, but I don't think aeroids is your primary concern. Yeah. Primary uh, collection. Yeah, I started uh, growing. Um, during the pandemic and yeah. I think Aeroid definitely was like like many people Aeroid was the one that got me thinking yeah. and then uh, got me started collecting plants right yeah. um, but I think after that I started looking at other genuses and then um, yeah like Pipers that one that you're seeing now yeah what is this uh, one Piper do you this is uh, un, un, I, I, I'm no I don't have the ID so yeah. Yeah, it's just an SP to me okay. but uh, like the leaf reminds me of uh, Enterium stendidum yeah. So it's very bulleted, that's why I kind of like caught my eye and uh, it's actually very thin. Yes, yeah. sounds like it's something that's very difficult to care for, is it? Actually, it's a very thirsty plant, so I just oh. do keep it uh, keep it moist all the time. Oh yeah. So I use um, a more water retentive media here. Okay, and you get like filtered, kind of like bright but not direct sunlight yeah. here. So I have a shade net about 70 to 80%, mm -hmm. so it's always bright, indirect. Yeah. And then tell us a little bit before we go on to talk about uh, your a bit of, about your fertilizing and maybe your pest control regime. Like right. So um, when it comes to fertilizing, I use um, uh, synthetic. So I use slow release. Yeah. Um, as well as uh, alternate weeks or every two three weeks, whenever I have the time, I will supplement it with liquid fertilizer. Okay. Yeah. So there are some local brands that we we use in Singapore. Yeah. And um, I think it it kind of supplements the slow release as well. Yeah. Yeah. Then when it comes to pest control, I actually don't really do any active pest control. Okay. So um, I mean, you know, let, I let nature take its course. Yeah. Um, there are spiders. There are snakes. Yeah. What is that sound? I think that's a bike. <laughs> that's so cute. Okay. I thought it's like a dying bird. No. It's not a <laughs> so cute. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I was yeah. saying uh, I don't really do much of a pest control. Uh, I let nature does it do its course. Yeah. Um, so whenever I see like you know uh, mealy bugs, I'll just kind of pinch it. I'll okay. just uh, kill it on the spot. So I don't apply too much of these um, pesticides or neem oil or whatever.
whatever whatever you use, you know, commonly. Interesting. And yeah. yeah, I guess some of these they are usually very spider mice prone, but yeah. I've not seen any. So good job on that. Yes. <laughs> but I, I hear the humidity here really it doesn't create a condition for them to thrive in. So. I still do get some spider mites at, uh, on the leaves, but uh, very rarely. And like I said, it's misted every day. Humidity yeah. is like ninety plus percent, yeah. and and you know it rains every other day. So yeah. ten, uh, the leaves tend to keep uh, stay wet. Yeah. Yeah. But um, there's good airflow, so I think it, it helps to you know dry up the plant in time, and then also prevent um, pests like spider mites. Cool. All right. So this is your like propagation area. Yeah. So, so and I'm a bit OCD. So if, for example, here there are the monsteras. Oh, you root them by genus. Yeah, and on top is all the uh, allocasias. So I'm generally a bit more particular about allocasias, and I group them together. So in case there's any outbreak, okay. they're all contained, right? Correct. And I see more Barringtonias here. Where did, where did you propagate them or did they did you just buy multiple ones? Oh, uh, no, so I, I, when I first got it, uh, I got two to three. So I just wanted, uh, of different sizes. Okay. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that, you know, if in case one dies, I still have another one. <laughs> have you propagated them before? No, no actually not yet. But uh, I wonder I've, how you do it. Uh, I've seen the cuts on the plant, so yeah. I do know that um, it's. Uh, stem cuttings. Yeah, so you, if you cut it, you probably can get one or two vines, new vines out, and you might be able to save the top. Um, you know? So usually uh, they are, uh, the Barringtonias are single stem plants. Yeah. So one trunk, one single trunking. So yeah. they usually don't branch out. Okay. Um, but of course, you know, after I cut, the mother plant will then have another one that comes out. So also it's always one stem at a time. Yeah, from yeah. the base then, not really. Yeah, so if, let's say you make an incision here. Yeah. Then uh, the new uh, the new shoot will come out from here. Then oh, I yeah. can replant this. Correct. So from it will come out from the trunk itself, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not so not so not from the base below. Uh, it depends on how deep you cut. So I think yeah. the last time uh, when I bought this, yeah. the, the cut was made quite low. Yeah. Yeah. And it survived. And it put out a new vine. Yeah. Oh, Brazilian plants then. This is like the Nepenthes like Viking or something, right? Yeah. Cute. This one is uh, has done its work. So. Yeah. <laughs> So um, all the anthuriums like the Warroquinum, uh, Vitarifolium, um, some of them that you know I'm just trying to make full use of real estate, right? Uh, yes. So then I, I do hang them. Yeah. Um, I think over time in the community, people do talk about certain plants. Uh, it would be better to hang there because of airflow. So for example, yes. like Warroquinum. Yeah. Um, I think with the consistent humidity, airflow, I think hanging them up. Uh, does allow it to mimic a bit of nature. So these are really, really interesting. I mean, these are orchids, but the leaf, look at the leaves, it's amazing. Okay, yeah. what is the name of this? I'm covering your, you're not supposed to cheat. This is a Prominia Rosalini. Good yeah. job, did you cheat? Of course not. Okay, <laughs> Beautiful, uh, tell me something about it. Does it flower nicely? Where is it from? Uh, I almost had one uh, the other day, but uh, it got bitten off by a shrew. <laughs> So I mean, shrews here. From, yeah, apart from the usual pests, you also get like shrews, slugs, snails, yeah. like pests that you don't get from home uh, ho house gardening, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a slipper orchid, Papio but uh, I can't remember. Say that it's just this Equigenera, but it's Papio right? Yeah. Cute. It's a, a beautiful leaf. Yeah. Too. So I've uh, I've taken a liking to orchids because of uh, slipper orchids. Oh, yeah, good. so um, liked how the uh, petals are look, uh, how the the, the flower the flower looks like. So yeah, yeah. very so, dramatic. Yeah, most very of them dramatic. here uh, are petal petalum. Okay. Um, pity is that uh, most of them are a lot of them are cool growing. So there are a handful of them that are warm warmer growing in the Singapore climate. So that's why I I have them. Just give it a try. Yeah. I see a lot of people also have these, this like Aglon. Uh, Diefenbach here? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, is a very um, easy to grow Diefenbach yeah. here. Uh, it's a variegated, um, I think they call it Pang Lima. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's very underrated. I think, um, you know, this variegation doesn't run. Yeah. So you see, if, if you see every leaf. Yeah. Yeah, they're all very well variegated. And it doesn't burn as much. Yeah. Mm. And it's very easy to grow. Diefenbach are yeah, very easy, fast forgiving. Food. It's like an anthurium that you've grown on a... Yeah, look at the roots, right? Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Look at this roots. It's like form. exploding. Yeah. Um, so then my next challenge will be how to how do I report it in the future? Yeah. You can monetize this. You can open an OnlyFans account for this root porn. You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is also an interesting like dark leaf. Yeah, this is a dark leaf alocasia. Oh, it's an alocasia? I would yeah. never have guessed. Yeah, this is a regal shoe. So this is a hybrid. Okay. Interesting.
interesting. Oh, yeah, gorgeous. So, make a guess. That, is it a philodendron? It's a alocasia. Yeah. Yeah. So this it is called like Brantifolia. Mayo. So you can see the leaf are all branching out. Okay. Hence the name. Yeah. Do you know where it's from? Uh, I mean, I got it from Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. You get a lot of plants from Indonesia. Thank yeah. you for supporting our economy. <laughs> of course. <laughs> very, very nice and then plants. Yeah. And also you see, I see a lot of ferns. You collect ferns as well. Mm. So you don't discriminate. Yeah, so the next genus that I kind of like got into was all the jungle plants, yeah. uh, ferns. Yeah. So those are actually, uh, to me, it's a lot more interesting. So I kind of uh, started looking at all the different uh, genuses and trying them out. Yeah, which we will see more back there. I'm actually excited to show you guys like the stuff behind because it's like where the secret sauce is. <laughs> oh, the, is the good stuff at the back, right? Yeah, <laughs> look at this one though. What is this? I want to say this is like a piper. I could be very wrong. So I got this uh, from, a, from a seller and it's, it is basically sold as a Labisia. So they call it Labisia Silver. I believe that's just the trade name. Yeah. Yeah, but I uh, haven't really gotten to, you know, um, and uh, find out the ID. Okay. Yeah. You see, this is the new leaf. Cute. So if somebody knows what it is, please shout it out in the comments. Yeah. And Ryan will give you a thousand dollars. Ah. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Some interesting plants here too, like hidden, tucked away in the back. Uh, okay, I'm gonna test you. What are these? What is this one that we're looking at? So when I got these plants, uh, most of them are purchased uh, under the, their trade name. So a lot of them are Labisias, um, Lia Amabilis. Yeah, this is the uh, Zipoliana. Yeah, so this is the Fat. common Zipoliana. And yeah. then the one below is actually from Papua. Oh, this is different. I thought this is the same plant. Yeah, so the yeah, one is glossy. Yeah, the leaf is a little bit serrated for the Papua one. Okay. Yeah, and for the more uh, I, I'm not sure whether it's a maturity or is it like really there's a different form in different um, parts of Indonesia. I think there might be a different form, but look at them, they look so well, like, look so good together. Yeah. yeah and there's the uh, amabilis. The, I hope that they will become the next popular house plants. They're quite beautiful, but humidity loving, right? Yes. That's one of the downfalls. But it's not too demanding. Like, I think when yeah. people think about humidity loving, they always imagine 90%. Yeah. Know? But uh, actually, between 70 to 90, some of these plants can still thrive. Yeah. And the more we grow them out, like the, it becomes a natural selection process. Like the stronger ones can actually withstand lower humidity over exactly. time. Exactly. So what is yeah. this one here? So this is uh, uh, Elastostema. Yes. Um, unfortunately, I also don't know the An ST. Idea. And they flower beautifully, Elastostema. Yeah. yeah. So far, it hasn't flowered for me before. Yeah. And these are little pots, but oh my gosh, look at this glittery. This is, I don't know, what, what, do you, what is this? This is a piper from Ecuador. Okay. So you bring in plants from all over? Yeah, I, I mean, in Singapore, we do have endemic plants, but uh, of course, when I first got started into plants, uh, yeah. there's a lot of uh, interest in the Ecuadorian South American plants, yeah. uh, also in the Indonesia, Thailand. Yeah. yeah so um, yeah, we had the luxury in Singapore to really be having very easy importation. Yeah. So I think that, that really helps us to, you know, be able to collect plants from different parts of the world. Absolutely. Uh, this, this right here too, it caught my eye. I don't know if you know what this is. Yeah, this is one of my favorite. Yeah, oh my gosh. Uh, so it's actually a magravia, kind of like a vining plant. Yeah. So this is uh, of SP alcoca. So it's, if you look at the dark um, leaves, yeah. and then on the underside, it's actually a dark maroon. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so yeah. it's actually really, really sexy. Yeah, and the velvety texture. Yep. Oh my gosh. But it uh, can be quite a Difficult? Difficult one to acclimate. Yeah, I can see this is on the struggle bus. I see all these like vines that are now empty. Yeah. Yeah. It might be, it might be a bit... Oh, this is like where the new growth comes yeah. from? Yeah, so this is... Where, actually, actually, they are usually about this size if you see it in the market. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, collectors in the West, um, you know, with leaves of this size. Yeah. And I was fortunate to, to basically yeah. snack this during one of the uh, sale events yeah. for this size here. Yeah. Philodendron for cotton. Mm. Looks like a difficult one to care for. Look at how thin and how <laughs> delicate the leaves are. Yeah. So some of this, um, you know, we always, um, we, when we stay at different parts of the world, mm -hmm. um, our environments are vastly different, right? Correct. So, like, we always want to sometimes try certain plants that are more temperate. Yeah. So this one, initially, we all 
thought that it was hard to grow because uh, they are generally on the higher lands of Ecuador. Yes. But it turns out to be fine. Yeah, huh. so they're actually quite tri uh, thriving quite a bit in, under this weather. Yeah. But of course, I don't put it out right in the sun, so I'll yeah. kind of put it at one corner uh, where there's more shade. Yeah, but I didn't notice the recurring theme of the growers here is that the environment here is actually quite good for these plants. Like the, you guys have like a really nice automated system, and I guess like really really good natural light. Yeah, uh, high humidity. Yeah, and a lot of tips sharing between each other. So I guess that really helps sometimes. Yeah, so like, um, you know, when we all start moving in and then we have like the earlier inhabitants telling us all the mistakes that they've made. So we kind of um, fine tune and improve along the way, right? Correct. Yeah. And it's specific to this area because when you move to a different environment, the care tips slightly would change. Yeah. And this is, um, I think I commented this before on your Instagram. Is this the same plant that we were talking about? No, this is... Um, uh, cytosperma yeah, and in fact it's actually flowering yeah the flowers be I think you did post this and I said something about the flowers this, that the, uh, yeah the, uh, and also the, I posted the, that I'm less oh yeah, okay two uh, different words <laughs> let's get to that later yeah yeah so actually you see the inflow it's actually very spiny correct very interesting and the yeah it's in your previous um, in your previous video yeah. um, and actually you, uh, you featured this in uh, Gregory Hambali's uh, garden as well yeah he has some fantastic I can't tell you what they look like it's top secret <laughs> but the houseplant market better get ready for some Sertosperma yeah, you have all these strap leaves as well like a lot of people here have it I think it's quite common here yeah uh, Palidiflorum or something yeah that's right I'm kind of into very odd shaped leaves yeah hence uh, you know strappy pendant leaves are one of them interest one, one of those that interest me yeah do you pollinate or or anything with your seeds and things like that or uh, no not yet okay. so i've not tried n2 rims yeah. but uh quite keen um but the only issue is that you know sometimes when it rains you can't really tell whether the it is the pole uh, the, the plant inflow or is it the um, rain water that's on the um, and to real meat flow. Correct. And one thing to add is that you actually don't come here every day. None of the growers come here every day. You guys have actual real jobs and a life <laughs> outside yeah. of this. So this is born out of passion and determination. All of this. So this is why I'm very, very amazed by what you guys do here. And of course, your, everybody's sens sensibilities and tastes are different. Yeah. So that's amazing that you've got this community going. Yeah, as you can tell, we are, most of us are hoarders, so oh, yeah. basically we have, too much. <laughs> have quite a bit from our homes and then it gets so overcrowded that we have to move out. Yeah, this is beautiful too, this philodendron fuzziperio or something? These are serpents. Serpents. Yeah, you've got your warrock going on. Yeah, these begonias are just asking to be stepped on so we've got to like inch around them a bit so this is like pretty narrow but you're really strapped for space and you have to make you know make do with what you have in terms of space um, this is your begonia section yeah so this uh, these are all my begonias so I mean of course I started like many other begonia growers with canes first okay. so most of them are canes oh, you're and sorted by type it really depends on um, the the amount of moisture it can take mm. so while we all know that you know they like to be moist they like to be wet um, but uh, you know some of the leaves uh, I also want to keep them pristine hence yeah. uh, depending on how much they can take moisture I'll yeah. place them at different parts of uh, so not necessarily by the type anymore mm. so never, you cannot place them alphabetically <laughs> too bad the, this, my OCD <laughs> doesn't work here and I think some of your nicer begonias are actually in your home in the tanks which we're not allowed to see the right? more <laughs> demanding the finicky and fussy ones are not cannot be found here because yes. here you are exposed to the 24 elements. 7 elements right yeah. yeah and inconsistent care here too it's hard to control the environment can we come see your begonia sometime let's see yes. next episode yes <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, labisia Everything's called Labisia these days, but I'm sure exactly. I have a feeling they're not. Do you think? Well, uh, I go by the trade name for now. I mean, yeah. I've been looking for papers to this to, to find the final described ID and genus, right? Yeah. But sometimes, uh, as you know, like you know, there's so many unidentified ones, so it really takes a lot of time for the researchers to to really you know identify, name it. What is this one? Do you know the name? This is uh, Begonia white eyes. White eyes. And down below, this one. This is this is a Papua uh, SP, so so far um, 
it resembles Serati patala, but mm-hmm. um, not too sure whether it's the same. It's a different form of the yeah. same species, or is it entirely different? But it's, it, uh, the serrated ages is really the one that like really keep, keeps my eyes on it. Yeah, this is a regali, and I feel obligated to shoot this because like everybody loves, <laughs> everybody loves it. Yeah, but it's like pretty easy to care for, pretty basic right? yeah, for you. you. Do a hit test. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's actually quite fast free. Yeah. And it's still expanding at this point. So yeah. looking forward to see how big it can grow. Yeah, a good begonia, uh, begonia a good <laughs> anthurium for beginners maybe who yep. want a bit of like a rare type vibe. And really quickly, standing next to it, this like begonia is look, it's huge too. Yeah. Did you get it big or did it size up here? So it's sized up here. Um, yeah. If you see the original leaves, they're about this size. Yeah. Yeah. And interestingly, oh, wow. if you look at how it climbs. And a tiny leaf on the yeah. Yeah, the roots are all holding onto the wooden po- poles. Oh, this is like interesting. This is a uh, king Cli- begonia. Yeah. And it behaves like a climber as well. Oh, okay. But not all begonias put out aerial roots like this, right? Uh, it actually uh, some of them does so when they kind of um, crawls either crawls on the ground yeah. or they climb on the um, walls of the, the the caves or the, the limestone right so basically they will push put out new roots and then once they secure themselves and then they'll start pushing out new leaves so it's kind of like rhizometers but yeah climbing up. so it's yeah. like aeroids too when they climb up they access better light and they just put out bigger leaves yeah interesting i usually th- thought of begonias more as a as a clumpy type plant but not <laughs> My first time seeing that. Yeah. That new leaf is so adorable. It's coming up. Hello. This is like a warrock hybrid, I think. Not a. This one? Yeah. This is a, a pure warrock. Oh, okay. It looks yeah. slightly different. Sorry, I called you a hybrid. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful, though. It's gorgeous. Just that one leaf. Is there other leaves that's coming out, or? No, it's just one. There's a new one coming soon, but not yet. Yeah. Yeah, warrock usually upsize quite quickly. Quite so if you f- fertilize them regularly, I think um, you should be able to see jumps in sizes like within yeah. a year. I think I need to up my fertilizing game. I'm under fertilizing all my plants. And you, got, you said you mentioned that you got these wood poles here, just to show that a lot of plants and this too. Like you, you have a lot of poles throughout for them to climb onto, right? Yeah. So um, I mean, of, of course, I started off with aeroids, right? So when I um, okay. first began, I also want to see the plants growing into full maturity. Yes. So when I designed this uh, layout, I made sure that the middle lane has a lot of uh, poles for me so that the plants can actually climb. Yeah. What is your favorite plant right now? My favorite. Did we already talk about it? Uh, no, we haven't. So I think it's very hard to come up with a favorite. Yeah. Uh, but of course, I have some few babies over there. Okay, let, let's... I'm greedy, so there will be two favorite plants. Okay. So this is the first one. Yeah. So if you see this, this is actually a Christ- crystallinum, mm-hmm. Anturin crystallinum, but uh, it's the Fairchild crystallinum. Fairchild Botanical Gardens? Yeah, so I've gotten this from um, NSC Tropicals uh, in Florida. Yeah. So uh, it's still a juvenile, it's still growing. Um, but if you get to see on Google, do a search on Google, you can see how um, pretty the mature size is. So it's basically in, like a very narrow, long... No, it's actually quite hard shape. Okay. So it's not really exactly long, but yeah. the venation is very elaborate. So okay. it's even more elaborate than your usual Ecuadorian crystallinum. Let me see if I can pull that on the screen without getting in trouble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because the next one is actually the PSS. Oh, I've, I've, yeah, everybody's yes. favorite. Is, yeah. Do you like it because like, I don't know, it's something that everybody is, is Not really. About um, I think at the beginning, um, I got it, you know, there was this um, craze about it, right? But I kind of waited for the craze to die down before I get this. Yeah. And of course, you know, um, I, I generally like weird shaped leaves. Yeah. So this is particularly long, right? Yeah. And um, I was hold this is a, a narrow form mm-hmm. so I'm just very looking forward to see how I can see the maximized uh, the full-grown mature plant with a very narrow form yeah yeah interesting and here you you fail to put uh, put out the mature form of the lupinum yes as many have tried and failed this is a challenge yeah they this is still juvenile it's, I don't know what they need man this is like yeah yeah we need some secret sauce so I think if you know how to actually grow this to a full maturity, yeah. please let Sean or me know. I would yeah. like to know how to how to yeah. actually get it bigger. <laughs> so this begonia, it's the 
This is a Begonia U402. Mm -hmm. So um, why this kind of uh, naming is because, um, in fact, Begonia has a very, very vast number of species, right? Yeah. And even till date, um, the researchers still have a lot, a lot of them that is un undescribed. So in the meantime, they name it under a U, alphabet U, mm -hmm. and then followed by a series of numbers yeah. just to identify it for the time being. Yeah. yeah, and then wait till they have a full description, uh, full papers written, then they will have a proper name. And this is growing, I, I'm assuming it's a fast grower and easy, because yeah. it's like everywhere, it's almost like a weed taking over spaces. Yeah, I planted it as a three leaf, four leaf um, stem cutting. So after I water root it, I just left it in. How long ago, do you remember? Years? Months? Less than four, five months ago. Oh my gosh, and it turned into this? Yeah. Wonderful. This is such a good candidate for maybe like landscaping or something. Yeah, it's a good ground cover. So yeah. if you have like some um, taller plants, you can just put this around. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the CZ gem. Yeah, this is the Juhoi. Yeah, but it's so stubby. It's normally like long or is it because it's still young? So this yeah. is still young. So of course I'm looking forward for the leaf to get bigger. Yeah. Um, this is the best location because I changed it, you know, around the plot. Even though this is a small plot, yeah. like there's very, very different kind of environment. Yeah. So I moved it around. Like at one point, it wasn't growing. Okay. So then uh, after I moved it here, it started pushing on new leaves. So okay. I kind of gonna leave it here for the time being. Yeah. So it's not an easy plant to care for. You'd say it's like, pretty temperamental. Um, it's not temperamental, but like as my, what I mentioned earlier on, like as long as you know you don't disturb the root ball, yeah. I think it, it generally will will do its job once it's activated. So this one took me about uh, half a year, oh. but now it's uh, a happy plant growing new leaves. This is another Barringtonia? No, this is uh, also <laughs> sold as Labisha. Of course, I don't think it's really Labisha, yeah. but uh, I've yet to find um, the actual ID. So, yeah, so a lot of um, the plants, I kind of just wanted to see how it reacts in my environment. It looks good, so I kind of bought, bought it. Yeah. yeah. And you do have some Pythisterium here, but I, would, I don't know, are you like super passionate about them or are you just like... There was like a couple of, uh, I think a year ago, there's a craze, you know, everyone is trying to have this. And if you see um, Taiwan, yes. you know, they are very, very... Um, crazy about platyserums like uh, all the jade girl and all the different um, new hybrids yeah yeah for me uh, I, I guess you know everything started off with you know one of them that looks like you know the deer antlers right mm -hmm. and that kind of got me to start collecting oh, so it's like a FOMO moment but yeah like you can't I, I don't know I've never seen you talk about them this is why I was like oh I didn't know that you had them it's but. um it's not easy to grow well because I think yeah. sometimes for different SPs yeah. they will um react differently to the same environment. Okay. So you have the Australian ones like the VGI yeah. that are a bit more uh, dry, that enjoys more dry environment. Yeah. But you have some that in the Indonesia like your, uh, or the Philippines like your Coronarium, yeah. they tend to be able to take water more. So it depends on the environment and how the shale looks, right? So yeah. when I first started, the shale all turned black because of water injury. Yeah. So I tend not to share that yet. And then this is uh, Esquelido. Look at the new leaf just come out. Wow. And if you like symmetry, that <laughs> they're, right there. they're very tidy plants. What is this one here? Do you know? Um, this is also another um, species of Sizigium. Hmm. So I think, um, you know, Sizigium, uh, if you know Jambu, yes, yeah. So it's um, also but under the Sajigam family. Guava, so, yeah, right. exactly. So um, this one is unidentified yet. So there's a lot of um, new species that's being um, discovered in Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. So I think you know, really looking forward for all the researchers to come up with the described names and, and you know more, more information about these plants. Yeah, yeah. You're right about like being in love with the deep foresty type plants. This is don't tell me this is another Labesia. <laughs> no, this is um, <laughs> another Barringtonia. Barringtonia, yeah, different, but not Papuana. Okay, the hit, the light is hitting it just right. It looks like a glass cathedral. Look at that. That's the effect of the lighting. Do you know the name of this? Um, it's quite a mouthful to pronounce. I would love to see you try. <laughs> Barros, Barros something. <laughs> Are you <laughs> see? You told me you remember the name of all your begonias. <laughs> I was furiously brushing up my. Okay. Um, names yesterday night. Okay, <laughs> and yet you failed. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is really, really gorgeous. 
And it's a cane or a rex? I can't, uh, it's a rex, right? This is a rhizomatus. Rhizomatus. Mm. Are these like interesting rare palms or like? Nah, this is just uh, betel nut pumps. So, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. the common name for the plant pumps, the, the seed that comes off, the fruit that comes off uh, is called betel nut. Yeah. So uh, the scientific name is um, Erica Katechu. So why are you growing it? I'm confused. <laughs> uh, it's just, um, you know, interesting to try different genus, right? And, yeah. you know, when I first got started, um, a friend passed it to me. Yeah. So I just wanted seeds. to see how they actually grow out to be. Yeah. Yeah, these are the, the fruits and then the seed comes up, came out. Yeah. Mm. Good, so you're also like, studying things, figuring out like... Yeah, it's always trial works. and error. So you have to, you know, I've killed hundreds of plants before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I figure out how to actually grow them well. And once you figure out a genus, like you can kind of get like the similar types mm. later on and they would have like kind of similar care. This is just the regular Vitariofoliums? No. Uh, no? Yeah. This is uh, again sure? another very, yeah. another Anthurium that's quite a mouthful. Try pronouncing it. Friedrich, Friedrich Stal Stalii. Friedrich Stry Stalii. Yeah. yeah. So he has a mini stowaway philodendron that's stuck inside. Oh yeah. Okay, interesting. <laughs> this is that begonia we saw earlier, but it's so pretty when the light hits it. Really stunning. So you come here again once every week or yeah, so? Yeah, once, once or twice a week. And then you spend a whole day here? In yeah, I spend at least like four or five hours, yeah. you know, sometimes to fertilize the plant, you know, check for bugs. Yeah. Um, if not, then uh, pick up yellow leaves, you know, and just and maintain the garden in general. And buy new plants, bring new plants. <laughs> yeah. But do you think that that's enough time? Because I'm like, this is overwhelming. How do you get all that done within one day or four hours? So of course, uh, you know, gardening is supposed to be fun. So yes. I don't want to kind of like stress myself over all this. So I do what I need to do in terms of priority and then I will just move on. Yeah, yeah. so basically give yourself like that four or five hours a week and then yeah. whatever you can manage within that time, that's what's going to live, that's yeah. what's going to... Yeah, so I mean, you know, it's supposed to make you feel good, you know, get away from yeah. work, get away from life for that few hours. So it's not supposed to be stressful. Okay, so this is one thing about having plants uh, is that you can actually control the time. If you have it in your home, it'll be a non-stop project where you're like, oh, I need to do this and that all the yeah. time. So when I first started, I also started growing at home. Yeah. And then what happened was that, you know, every time you see root rot, you see something wrong and then you, you just save it. stress and put everything down, right? So right. here it's like kind of outside, out of mind. So yeah. if you are here for five hours, yeah. then you're just here, you know, looking at them for five hours. And the environment kind of takes care of a lot of the, the stuff here. This is beautiful luxuriance and the green leaf that's coming through. Stunning. Yeah. A lot of it is actually quite autopilot. Like, you know, I do daily misting. Everything is controlled by timer. Mm. So I don't really need to come down unless like, you know, something breaks down. Otherwise, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to just drop by once or twice a week. And when you're away, like on a holiday or something, do you have people that come in and, and help you check out? The... I mean, you know, my neighbors will sometimes pop by and take a look if I'm doing a very long trip. But otherwise, okay. you know, usually if I travel for a week, I, I leave it on its own. Do you reciprocate? Do you help, ever help your neighbors? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the neighbors and comment down below. I'll, if go, in, I'll go in with a scissors. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> neighbors, please watch out. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is Hoffmania reflugans. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. But you don't, have, you don't struggle with these jungle plants, right? You just leave them here and then they kind of do okay on yeah the ground. yeah so i was experimenting right so sometimes even you know these jungle pr plants yeah. they thrive in um aeroid mix so okay. i i use them on very draining um substrates and, yeah. and it still grows quite well yeah and this is a lot of this is like to me a lot of fertilizer but this is doing okay that's my secret sauce of getting the leaves big oh like more fertilizer yeah i mean slow release generally uh i mean you don't shock the plant yeah. immediately, right? So It takes time to shock the plant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I've, I've seen uh, friends, uh, ga fellow gardeners who, who use more fertilizer. Okay. But don't try this. <laughs> yeah, this is not an ad I mean, this is the advice that I tell people always under fertilize. But you know what? Honestly speaking though, I have been under fertilizing and that's also not a good thing. So kind of find your own balance, I guess. Yeah. It's such a nice evening here, you guys. Like, 
I mean, the sun is coming in just nice and all these like wonderful greenery. The air smells amazing. I don't think words can describe, especially since Singapore is such an urban city. I mean, it's not polluted and Singapore is very clean, but being here, you absolutely are transformed into like, I don't know how you describe, like a little slice of paradise. So thank you. This is amazing. Let's see all these aerial routes coming down, trying to trying to grab us. <laughs> yeah. Is this also an escalator? Yeah, it's an escalator. Now these plants are eventually just going to get bigger and bigger over time. What is your plan? Like, I mean, are you gonna keep moving and getting bigger spaces? Or? Good question. Um, You're not there yet. <laughs> not. I don't think I'll upgrade. <laughs> But uh, probably just, you know, chop it down, prop it, yeah. you know, share with people. Okay, yeah. you can share with me. Yeah, but take yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. Look at the stem here, this is just so stunning. And then with the contrast of the dark leaves. This is the blood banana, right? No, this is uh, the Siam Ruby. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So I was a bit worried when I first got in it. Because, yeah. um, you know, fellow, uh, my, my friends who have grown it before says it's quite challenging. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think the, the, the environment helps. Okay. And look at this little... Are these stowaways or do, are these, do you just have them here? The this, little uh, parakusums. Like, you know, sometimes you just drop a cutting or two. Yeah. And then it, it just root itself and then leave it there. This is so stinky. They actually look like begonias. <laughs> and behind you, uh, with the light hitting it just nice. This is a very... A hybrid or? This is a varicosum. It's a pure varicosum? Yeah. Maybe it's just the light that's hitting it like just beautifully. So as it gets uh, old, the yeah. old leaves tend to lose the um, intensity and contrast. Yeah. Yeah, but if you look at the new ones over here. Yeah, it's just like normal varicosum. Yeah. So it's, it's still like beautiful. Like I think it's just the light. Uh, what time is it now? It's like 4? Yeah, it's about 4 p.m. 4-ish. Yeah, I guess the, everyone, you know, have to keep a note. The best time to enjoy your plants is around 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> when the sun is coming down and it's like at a beautiful angle. It's really wonderful. Yeah, this is what we were talking about before with the Anthurium tweet. Polysystem. Yeah, did you show us already? Hang on, what were you going to show us before? The Amorphophallus. Oh, unfortunately, <laughs> I snip it off. <laughs> you snipped off like what? The whole thing? Yeah, because um, the flower rotted off. Like it's due. Uh, it's, it's kind of like dead already. Yeah. So I just snip off the Amorphophyllus flower. Just the flower, right? But yeah. the leaf is still there. No, so so usually Amorphophyllus, they will yeah. grow out like, the leaves. Yeah. Right, one leaf actually. Yeah. So the whole stalk that that one. comes out is actually one single leaf. Yeah. And then um, once it dies off, then yeah. it will push out a new inflow. So All it right. is a uh, sequential. It's not together. Yeah, but this one they put out the leaf and the inflorescence is... So the leaf kind of died off and yeah. then with enough energy it pushes this new uh, inflow. The so the one doesn't have leaves? Yeah, doesn't have leaves. Because it's modified leaf anyways, yeah. right? So you cut it off and a new one will come out in its, pla in its place. Yeah, so it will eventually. take its time and it will kind of go through another cycle. Yeah, if you don't rot it by then. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> Knock on wood. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, Plavisaria, my gosh, like look at how crazy intertwined. Do you know this, this one? This is uh, from Philippines, Coronarium. Um, they call it tin fronds. So the usual, the tip, uh, common one is actually thicker. Mm. Yeah, but this one is actually much thinner. Yeah. So I've gotten it from Thailand. And it's like quite mature, I think. It's like yeah. quite, quite beautiful. Did you get it as this size or smaller? Slightly smaller. Hang on, there's one more plant I want to test you. What is this one here? This is a homalomina. And which, what is the species? Uh, I think, if I recall correctly, it's just the SP Borneo or, or, or whichever city I got it from. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I got it. It's just SP, I guess. Cause yeah. <laughs> I think homalomina, not a lot of people know, but this is like wonderful. And I can tell from the front that the back would be very red. Yes. It's like amazing crimson red. Down no, the back, not easiest, right? These guys. Yeah. Because they're like very velvety, but this is actually really stunning. Yeah, sometimes, you know, uh, neglect is the best care. And you even have the dates, my goodness, Ryan. This is the date <laughs> of purchase and, or propagation, right? Yeah, date all of, of them have potting. dates. So do the date I pot it. Where do you print this? Like on your station back there? No, I, I do it at home and I'll come in. It's one of my therapy. What if you <laughs> forgot to bring the text or like, this is a lot of work. Like, pretty much almost every single plant has the text. <laughs> Oh my gosh, like you have to like write down like 
like put a mental note or you have a note to tell you what to print out? Oh, it's all in the phone. So I yeah. usually type out everything in the phone. That then you need to print out. Yeah. And you bring it next time that you're here the next <laughs> yeah. week. That is a lot of, oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know, man. It helps I, me keep track of the names, right? Yeah. <laughs> even hearing about it, I feel a huge wave of burden <laughs> on my shoulders, even though I don't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it, it, this uh, the house plant care and all these things, they actually f satisfy some of our needs. Like it, maybe you might have a bit of ADD. Do you have that or not? More of OCD. OCD, <laughs> okay. I have ADD, but not OCD. So we have, we are the f yeah, we're not the same, but. So it really nourishes and feeds your OCD. Yeah. Is it tendencies or personality or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> by choice. <laughs> Can we, before we go, I really want to put you on the spot. Can we look at your workstation? I want to see like the tools. I want to see your, because you spend a lot of time on that table, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me see what it looks like. I know, sorry, it's like, I did not warn him before. <laughs> so, so this is like where you hit the pots, obviously, and like potting medium and you have the different, can I open one? Yeah. So this is like different, uh... oh, I thought this was going to be media inside. So this is just, Stuff. Yeah, the medias are all in the big boxes. Yeah, and then you have the pre-mixed media in here. Yeah. Wow. And then you have this campy chair in case you need to hang out like, and sit down. All the accessories will be here. Yeah. And then this is like your workstation that you actually like do stuff. Propagation, cuttings yeah. and, and stuff. Look at this uh, cute little tool section. I love looking at this because just by looking at it, you can tell a lot like about the person. Like, you know, these are daily tools that people, like, well, the plants need them yeah. to, to thrive. So. so like everything is kind of like mini project. So I decided to build a potting bench myself. So yeah. I just went and I built something that's easy for me to uh, do my propagations and my plant care gardening. Thank you. All right, well, I guess, hang on, let me turn around. I guess, thank you so much. I think, is there anything else you want to show us or? Um, pretty much, I think you've seen everything. So maybe stay tuned for the next uh, Begonia Tang episode. <laughs> yes, please. Maybe, yeah, I'll hound you again. And I guess, thank you guys for watching all the way to the very end. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Welcome to an encore and a three months update. Ryan has actually moved to a new plot ever since our filming three months ago and this is what it looks like. Look at this torrential rain and can you imagine him holding his phone camera through this? Thank you so much Ryan for filming this for us. It's such a pleasure to see this update and there's a beautiful anthurium, I think chamberlaini or a hybrid with gorgeous new red leaf and everything looks more spaced out. It looks brighter in here, more cheerful. Although I have a feeling that these plants will very quickly outgrow their spaces and take over this space basically. Because everything I can see here is kind of rehabbing. The move is actually stressful, not just for us, but also for plants. So they will take a few weeks or months to adapt to the new space. And I'll be watching closely to see the transformation. And for the rest of you, please do give him a follow if you want to see some of his progress. And I see here tidy rows of begonias. I want to challenge Ryan to organize his begonias alphabetically. <laughs> I'm kidding. And if you're still watching, please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like this video so that YouTube will push these videos to other plant lovers like yourself. Thank you again, and I wish you all well.